This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. It's one o'clock on a Monday afternoon, so you must be watching Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness Mark, and my guest today is Dr. Bin Chen, who has been on this particular show a number of times. But Bin, you're from the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, and your area of expertise is high pressure mineral physics. So before we get started, mm -hmm. people have already seen earlier shows with you. Just remind us, what does somebody who does high pressure mineral physics really do? Yeah, so what we really do is to employ high pressure devices like a diamond anvil cell or a large volume press to uh, squeeze samples to very high pressure and then we also heat it up. And then we use the x-ray or laser to probe the material properties under these conditions. And then over uh, the purpose of, uh, of this experiment is to try to understand uh, the structure or the compositional makeup of the planetary interior. Okay, so th this is really high pressures mm -hmm. in comparison to what the general public would experience. You know, it's not like just going down to the bottom of the ocean and the, mm -hmm. the water pressure. This is really deep. This is hundreds of miles down beneath the Earth's surface. So we can mm -hmm. actually obtain the same kind of pressures and mm -hmm. the same kind of temperatures that one yeah. would see inside the interior of the Earth. Is that correct? Yes. So using a device called a diamond anvil cell, so it's a pocket size, but uh, we can squeeze samples to the pressure temperature conditions found uh, at the center of the Earth, so which is uh, like uh, more than 3 million atmosphere pressure. 3 million times the pressure that you and I are experiencing right now in the studio, for yeah, example. Exactly. And you mentioned samples. Are these big room size samples or are these little tiny it's things? It's very tiny sample because uh, we know that the pressure is basically forced over an area. So in order to reach higher pressure, we can either increase the force or we can decrease, reduce the area that the diamond applied to. So the samples uh, usually, in, in, yeah, in order to reach the pressure of the center of the earth, the sample volume is usually like a tens of micron. Oh, so very, it's very small. Very small. You can still sample. see the sample, but only with a magnifying glass and that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And just, just to recap once more, we can do this to look at the minerals within the earth. Mm -hmm. I think you've also brought along the first slide, if we can take a look at that. Mm -hmm. We can also apply this to the interior of any other planet. That's why yeah. you're in the Institute of Geophysics mm -hmm. and Planetology. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and here we're seeing the first slide with the mm -hmm. Earth, and I guess these are all drawn to the same scale. Yep. Earth on mm -hmm. the left-hand side, the Moon uh, top center, Mars on the far right, and the planet mm -hmm. Mercury at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And we've got a ratio here. RC over RP is what? So it's the uh, core radius versus the planetary radius. The, the radius of the oh, core over, inside the planet. Yeah, over the uh, radius of the planet. And what's interesting is that these numbers are different, right? Yeah, these are quite different. And then, so we know that uh, the terrestrial-like uh, planet, they all has a uh, crust, mantle, and the, the core, right? And then the Earth, so the, so the Earth's core is uh, like 2,900 kilometers uh, in depth. So we can reach the top of the Earth's outer core if we do a uh, hole uh, 2,900 uh -huh. uh, kilometers deep. And then we can impossible, reach... Impossible, but if that, we that, Yeah, that is of course impossible. Yeah. But uh, uh, in our experiment, we can really simulate the conditions on the, at that depth. But can. the same experiments you're conducting, you could also learn something about the interior of our moon mm -hmm. or Mars or Mercury, Mercury presumably yes. if you change the composition of the materials in your, mm -hmm. your samples and that sort of thing. Yeah, we, uh, so currently, so, uh, yeah, we are, so we are trying to understand so what are the composition makeup of uh, all these planet cores. Right. 
but for the Earth's core, there are many candidates that, such as carbon, oxygen, like a. So the so the Earth's core is mainly made of iron, nickel. And, and, and for our know. dedicated yeah. viewers, of course, this is all background, mm -hmm. correct? Because Bin's been on the show at least a couple of times before. Mm -hmm. But you've just come back from Chicago, mm -hmm. where you've had like six weeks of experiments. So yeah. let, let's segue into what's mm -hmm. new in your field, all right? So mm -hmm. um, I think you went to the Argonne National Labs, which we've got in the, the, the second slide. Yeah. Uh, and so tell us a bit about what you were doing over mm -hmm. the last six weeks. Yeah, in the last six weeks, we had uh, six experiments. So. In order to get the beam time in the advanced light source, we had to apply in, in advance. We had to submit a proposal, and then we can gather sometimes uh, like three days, sometimes six days beam time. So I have six of them, uh, like six of these proposals funded uh, uh, for the beam time. And then, uh, so what we do is that we, are, we employ the high brilliance and the high energy access source uh, produced by this uh, uh, and, and in the uh, image you're using some yeah. jargon here let's explain for our audience yeah. you mentioned beam time well mm -hmm. you went to this facility which mm -hmm. is outside Chicago yeah and the beam is that like a, a death ray from Star Trek or, or what what do you mean by beam time yeah the beam time is basically the time that is awarded to a PI who can, investigator. Yeah, the principal investigator who can use the hybrid X-ray to okay. probe your samples there. So there are many like uh, beam lines. It's like a station, uh, like a more more than thirty stations around the ring. So we only use uh, a few of these stations, but there are some other stations. That and you use. had to go to Chicago presumably because. Those X-ray beams are not available here in Hawaii. Is that correct? No, it's not available it's a here because this highly uh, energetic, right? Yeah, because uh, the uh, the brightness of the X-ray uh, is close to the brightness uh, of the surface of the sun, so right. that's really bright. And, and yeah. so, when the audience hears you say uh, you're using X-rays. This is not like the X-ray you would have when you go to the dentist to do your teeth. This is thousands, if not millions of times more intense, correct? Yeah, it's much more intense. I see. Yeah. Okay. And let's take a, a look back at that uh, same image, because you're working uh, uh, on some uh, equipment here, correct? Yeah. So this is uh, the experiment that we conducted uh, uh, employing the, uh, like a, the techniques available at one of the uh, station or the experimental uh, hutch uh, at the Argonne National Lab. So this is uh, this picture shows my student uh, Xiao Jin Lai uh, working uh, in this hutch. She she was trying to install a diamond arrow cell uh, at the stage, and then uh, uh, surrounding the diamond arrow cell there are like uh, three detectors. So we use uh, to probe the very uh, weak signals from the sample, and then from the signals we can uh, determine uh, the vibrational and the acoustic properties of the samples squeezed between two diamonds, then we can uh, determine the sound velocity. And and this was a new project that you had to go there for six weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, can you tell us a bit about you know what was your objective to, to mm -hmm. make this trip and to do this particular study? Yeah, this is a, a project funded by uh, that's the National Science Foundation. Through the career, the early career, the early career, uh, uh, like a program. So, uh, so it's uh, so the project is mainly about uh, uh, the uh, like a sound of uh, the lattice dynamics of iron alloys under high pressure, in order to uh, understand the composition and also the structure of the Earth's inner. So this is a five-year project. So, and then uh, I have this funding. So, so right. I can and you, you mentioned the National Science Foundation's early career award. These are very difficult to obtain, correct? Mm -hmm. And you managed to win such an award mm 
uh, a year or so ago is mm -hmm. my recollection. So congratulations on Thank that. You. And it's great to see that you've got students in engaged already mm. in training the next generation. Um, mm. Let's look at the third slide because that will show us a bit more of the, the equipment, I guess, that you're using. Yeah. And, uh, there's three images here. Let's start with the, the big left. blue thing at the left-hand side. W what is that? So this is a press that uh, we used uh, to squeeze uh, large volumes of samples under pressure. And we also uh, heat it up using this uh, resistive heating method. So, uh, so we have x-ray from the right side. And then uh, uh, so the press is basically uh, because X-ray is stationary, we cannot move X-ray. We have to move this uh, press. This press is, uh, uh, is a 1,000 ton press. So uh -huh. it can generate with a 1,000 US ton. Uh, That's 1,000 yeah. tons. Yeah. Yes. Then we, uh, so in the experiment hutch, they can lift this whole press off the ground and move this press at a precision of micron wow. millimeter level. Like a, it's a, like a, yeah, micron level. Okay. Precision. And, and yeah. uh, the the other image at the uh, lower right of this slide, if we the can lower right of this slide, th this shows. This is the uh, uh, the module we are using to compress our samples. So so you can see that the uh, this the center cube is compressed from six directions. Okay. And then four uh, sides, top and bottom. Yeah both sides and top and bottom. And then, then uh, our sample is located at the center of these eight cubes compressed by the from six directions. Uh, so uh, in this experiment, we actually acquired a, a new grade of constant carbide cubes. So uh, we are trying to double the pressure capability of this uh, large volume press to like uh, from 25 or 250,000 bar to 500,000 right. bar. And if you can increase the pressure, then that's equivalent to going deeper into the earth's yeah. interior. And, that's and you can do a lot of uh, research using uh, this uh, new grade of tungsten carbide cube. I see. Yeah. And, and that new material, is that developed in Hawaii or it's just a commercially available? Uh, it's developed in Japan. So Japan is uh, uh, quite advanced in the super hard material research. So they have this uh, new grade of tungsten carbide cubes. I so see. we were quite lucky that we get these cubes and then we want to double the pressure capability that it can be achieved in, uh, in yeah in the US. In the US. In, yeah, in the Japan. In Japan, and, they, and they have already done Argonne that. Argonne National yeah. Labs, is that the only facility in the United States? or are there others or are there facilities like that in Japan or elsewhere? Yeah, there are a lot of uh, synchrotron facilities uh, in the, uh, not a lot of them, like uh, a number of them. Like uh, in the US, in the West, uh, in the West Coast, there's the uh, Advanced Light Source, the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Uh -huh. And then um, uh, in the Midwest, we have the Argonne National Lab, uh, and then in the on on the east coast we have this uh, NSLS, so uh, Brookhaven National Lab. So three or four, and you said synchrotron. This is a facility that provides these high energy X-ray particles that mm -hmm. investigators like yourself and our colleagues at mm -hmm. the university can come out yeah. and use. Mm -hmm. But um, not many, and there were a few other facilities. Uh, yeah. Elsewhere outside the United States. Right? Yeah, yeah. So there are a few in yeah in Europe. So you have a few in control, but not many because it's very costly and then need a lot of okay like money to run it. I I see. Well, we're just about coming up to a break, Ben. But when we come back, first of all, I have to ask, why do you do this? <laughs> Apart from, it's yeah. fascinating. And then uh -huh. also, how mm. did you get into this field? So uh, mm. we'll take a break right now. Mm -hmm. Let me just remind the viewers that you're watching Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark, and my guest today is Dr. Bin Chen from the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology at UH Manoa. And we'll be right back. 
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. And welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness Mark, and our guest today is Dr. Bin Chen, who's an assistant researcher at the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology at UH Manoa. And we're talking about high pressure mineral physics. Mm -hmm. Well, Bin, before we uh, went to the break, you were showing us slides of some of these equipment, pieces of equipment, mm -hmm. and I see that you've brought to the studio, just one of these small sample holders. Mm -hmm. So um, if we can put the, uh, the table camera on, what is it that we're looking at? Uh, uh, and let me just put yeah. my glasses so that mm -hmm. people can see the scale, all right? So this is quite a small little piece yeah. of equipment. Mm -hmm. What is it? So this is a, a model for uh, the diamond and arrow scale. So it's pocket size, so it can uh, uh, squeeze samples between two diamonds, so be between the two curates of the diamond. And then, uh, so we know that the pressure is generated by applying force to an area. So we can either... So we've got... Yeah. So we can basically... Uh, pieces in the yeah. middle, right? So the, uh, at the center is called the, the metal gasket. So we drill a hole in the metal gasket and then we load a very tiny sample in this metal gasket. So of course you... Yeah, you you so you need to be quite handy in loading very fine samples right. to, uh, like a a curate, uh, like a flat surface, uh, with a radius of like a twenty micron. Or something. Right. So even though you've got this giant press, that big piece of blue equipment we saw in one of the slides, mm -hmm. which was you know many refrigerators in size, mm -hmm. you're working with very fine pieces of equipment. So yeah. that leads the, me to the question, how did you get into this field? Yeah, that's a, a good question. So I was trained as a geochemist before. So I worked on uh, oxygen isotopes of uh, metamorphic rocks. Okay. And uh, when I applied for graduate school, so I yeah, yeah, happened to uh, enter this field. And I like it because I like to get my hands dirty in the lab and then, yeah, and then I think I'm quite a good at the, like doing all these So I'm always fascinated in yeah. people's career paths. So you started off as a geologist, correct? Yeah, geochemist. Ge yeah. Geochemist, you were looking at the composition of different rocks and Many isotopes. the yeah. isotopes mm -hmm. of this material. But then you seem to be into equipment and doing really fine detailed stuff. Did that transition occur when you were at graduate school or when you applied to UH for a job? Have, have you been doing this for years? Or? Yeah, I have been doing this uh, since 2004. Uh -huh. uh, actually, my first project is uh, about uh, Mercury School. So I the planet Mercury. Yeah, the planet Mercury School. So we uh, conducted high pressure experiments uh, on the melting of the iron sulfur system. And then uh, we found that uh, uh, the like the snowing or raining of the iron crystals uh, in Mercury's uh, liquid outer core uh, is is possibly is, is likely the cause for the magnetic field. W in would you say your career path is unusual? Like if if someone wanted to 
for follow you? Would she mm -hmm. be able to do this kind of study at any university, or mm -hmm. is there just one or two places around the country which specialize in? A uh, minimum fees program is uh, not a very large program in the U.S. There are only like a, a handful, uh, yeah, handful like uh, universities has this program, and uh, I think uh, it's not a like a uh, unusual like uh, career not, plus. Yes. Yeah, it, it's quite unusual. Huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. but then the next question is, why should anybody care? I w what what. Mm -hmm. What would the person in the street um, see as the, the relevance of this work? How, how, mm -hmm. um, how do you justify studying mm -hmm. these minerals at extreme pressure? What, what's the relevance? Yeah, the main reason is uh, out of curiosity, like uh -huh. uh, all these space missions. So we send the spacecraft to the outer space and then trying to understand the universe, right? Actually, there is also a universe in the interior of the planet because it's Correct. actually it's yes. more inaccessible than the outer space because you you cannot drill a very deep hole to the to the interior of the Earth. I think, uh, and then you get the sample. But it's probably easier to get a sample from the moon than. You so get this, a what from the, the work you do is kind of a detective story, mm -hmm. trying to understand where particular minerals occur within, let's mm -hmm. say, the Earth's interior. Mm -hmm. Is that important? You know, is there an, mm -hmm. anything? I've heard that you know, sort of earthquakes, the shock wave can go mm -hmm. through the entire interior of the Earth. Mm -hmm. Does your work relate to understanding earthquakes or? Uh, my work is not directly very like related to earthquakes, but uh, uh, my colleague, uh, so our colleague uh, Chemek Dara, so he's uh, now mainly working on the uh, subducted uh, slab, the like uh, some of the this mineral, uh, uh, some of the minerals uh, found in uh, the subducted slab. Okay, so and like subducted slabs is where the Earth's where, where crust the Earth. is overturning mm -hmm. through plate tectonics. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And my work is uh, so we are trying to understand the physics and the chemistry of the planetary interior. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, of course, the main reason is about the uh, yeah, it's out of curiosity, uh, like curiosity. And then the other is actually we uh, our re our research is uh, a very important piece that we can use to understand the chemical evolution of a uh, planet. Like if we look back in the uh, history of the oh, yeah, over planet and how, uh, how all these uh, chemical And I've also evolution. heard that mm -hmm. you know, the Earth's interior is probably unusual in that it generates a magnetic field which mm -hmm. protects us from radiation. I, is, is that correct? Does that relate to the kind of work that you can do? Yes, so that's a... Uh, uh, so the work I did uh, for about the Mercury score. So Mercury is a very a smaller version of Earth, right? Yes. So Mercury also has a magnetic field. So uh, so our work, uh, uh, so our high pressure work uh, work we actually did uh, have a very good. Uh, we proposed a very good mechanism for the generation of the magnetic field in Mercury, and I hope that we can do the same. For the Earth, and even planets like Jupiter have magnetic fields, which Jupiter's interior is mm. a, a much higher pressure. So, yeah, and, and the magnetic field is of relevance to people in their everyday life because yeah, it sure. shields us from the so the radiation from the outer space. Yeah. I see. So, so that even though your research is basically pure discovery. Mm -hmm. There are things like studying deep earthquakes, like studying the magnetic mm -hmm. field, which protects us from the sun. So that's presumably why NSF is interested. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, our, our research, there might be some like a byproduct from our research. For example, some group, some group of uh, researchers, they synthesize this uh, large uh, nanocrystalline diamond that has uh, industrial like, use. 
Ah, these super hard so you, you mentioned diamonds, and diamonds are created deep within the Earth's interior. So yeah. you you can can you make diamonds? Can you sort of mm -hmm. uh, the pressures that you're producing? Yeah, yeah, we make diamonds all the time because uh, we it, yeah if we use a graphite uh, capsule and then uh, under pressure and temperature. Uh, like produced by our multi anvil press, uh -huh. so we can see such diamond uh, very easily. Yeah. Okay. And but of course, if we want to see size like a, a centimeter size diamond, then we need a larger press. Okay. So you're not going to get rich by mass producing <laughs> diamonds then. <laughs> and some company are doing that. Are yeah, they really? Yeah, they are seeing size some like a diamond. Uh, 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 so. Are there commercial applications trying to understand materials or anything like that? Yeah, I think uh, so. These high pressure techniques, uh, if, uh, so we use it for basic research, but we can also use it for material science research. I see. And I, I've heard of other faculty members at UH who have actually looked at the performance of material under. Mm -hmm. under stress, you know, either in explosions or, mm -hmm. or that sort of thing. So yeah. there's a, a lot of relevance, even though you're basically doing mm -hmm. pure research, yep. as we've found in this show and many other programs, mm -hmm. the pure research has direct relevance either to people in Hawaii mm -hmm. um, or to the, the broader society in terms of new technologies and that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. Well, we're mm -hmm. getting near the end of the show, Ben. So mm -hmm. let me just thank you again and remind our viewers, you've You're been welcome. watching Think Tech Hawaii Research in Manoa. I'm your host, Pete McGuinness-Mark. And today we've had as our guest, Dr. Bin Chen, who's an assistant researcher at the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology at UH Manoa. And thank you for watching today. And hopefully you will join us again next week at the same time. Goodbye for now.